Hoes love rap. I was like, mommy, you can't say that. <laughs> with Nina Simone very very heavy just because she's so aware of herself like I think that's something I really aspire is to have a sense of self and a confidence in my own identity and if you like watch any interviews that she's conducted or listen to her music she just seems to know like who she is and is unaffected by the things outside of her and she seems like a very internal person and I respect that a lot and that's something like that song was when I felt it was time to actually write a book and get it published was because I finally had kind of like this concept of who I was like fully expressed. I watched this documentary where like just her crowd engagement and her totally like, comfort. Like I feel like she didn't really like dress or perform for other people as very much for herself and because she had that self satisfaction, other people were then able to enjoy it because she was no longer like trying to impress them. It would seem so effortless. And then the whole idea for the book came from the Nancy Moments, all like that. I heard that song first when I was probably like six years old when I first started dancing. And it's been a part of my upbringing ever since. At my dance school, every year we do a dance to four women, and all the little girls want to be and four women because A, it meant you were grown enough to do it, and we all wanted to be grown. <laughs> and B, it meant you were skilled enough of a dancer to dance that piece. And we're all like, oh, who do you want to be, girl? I want to be on Sarah. And then the little fast girl was like, I want to be Sweet Thing. <laughs> I was like, I wanted to be all of them. But like deep down, there was like this lingering thought of, I'm going to be Sapphorina. Like, we know it's good. You're the only light skinned girl at your ballet school. You're going to be the big girl. And that made me a little salty. But it, I don't know, it presents an interesting dichotomy. So the book has two characters, and you see them throughout the poems. One is, the quintessential stereotypical red bone. I was walking, like, it's, it's horrible. It's like really horrible. It's just like red bone, red bone, red Like, my, I'm like, my name is not red bone. If you want to ask it, feel free, but don't assume that. Um, so there's that stereotypical character, and then there's Saffronia. So there are these two identities that you see throughout the book, and you'll see them as I spit these poems. And I just want to thank all of y'all for coming out. There's, I love you so much. What about my love of poetry? I just like poetry because it, it brings me a lot of sanity. Like, I have too many feelings. Like, too many feelings at one time. And I think poetry really, like, helps me figure out what those feelings are and, like, place words to them. And it allows me, like, the creative license to tell you, like, I feel like a cat on meth. Like, what does a cat on meth feel like? I don't know, but that's how I feel this morning. Like, and y'all was like, damn. Cats on bed. <laughs> and I'm just like I just think I like that it makes it helps me figure out my feelings and also people tell me that those feelings are okay. So I'm like, okay, A, I'm not I'm no longer going crazy and B, maybe I wasn't crazy in the first place. Um and I think in my everyday decision making poetry uh I don't think it's like a large factor. It's definitely like, it's more like an end of the day, like, winding down thing. Like, this is my, like, time to, like, have this space. Like, during the day, like, I'm like, I got shit to do. Like, I don't have time to write in poems. Like, I, I have homework. I have a job. Like, things like that. But it's definitely a nice like, relaxation period where I'm like, okay, I can sit down and write this poem. I can sit down and read. It's respite that I allow myself, that I guarantee myself. Like, I require that of myself, like, that self-care is where the poetry really comes in. You have, I think it's your first poem, mm -hmm. the the one about the light-skinned woman from Cottage Grove. Yeah. And you had like a a side note after in parentheses, like not to be identified with yeah. the white woman or the light-skinned girl from Naperville. Exactly. Tell us, tell us about the, yeah. you know. Exactly. I think there needs to be a little separation in between like who I am because I by no means am like the stereotypical light-skinned mixed girl like I think that would be rude to trivialize people's experience to say like I can represent you all thoroughly like, my location has been so important into my development like the fact that I was born and raised on the south side makes me very different from a biracial girl living in Naperville like I don't know her experience I really want to get that out immediately like that's why it's the first poem like 
just let people know what's good that I can't tell other people's story. Like, this is so uniquely Dominique. And I hope you find a way to relate to it. I think I do touch on a lot of universal concepts, but I'm definitely not telling anybody else's story. So I'm going to call the Red Bone from Hyde's Grove Speaks, not to be confused with the Red Bone from Naperville or other mostly white areas. Right. The Red Bone is the divide between Afros and dreads. One party wags his tongue while the other bites it. The Red Bone kisses them both. The Red Bone wants a chocolate husband and a white collared white man's desire, but never a light skinned man, never more gray matter. The Red Bone believes in black and white alone, separate and unequal. The Red Bone is history bred fetish. Wants to be in a Toni Morrison book, not about the slave master's rapes and good hair and hazel eyes when she sees another Red Bone. <coughs> She judges her curl pattern. Are there any other women in Four Women that have inspired you or you relate to? I just, I think there's so many ways that people can identify with either Four Women. Like, on Sarah, like, that hard working, like, feeling unappreciated. Like, you are giving and giving and, like, you get no, like, you don't get anything in return. I think we've all been in that spot or sweet thing where we find... Um, importance and like meaning and purpose in men or peaches like we've all been that like angry black woman before like that's just tired of everything and like just on a like we want revenge for what's been done I think we've all like, represented those four women which I think is like, just a masterpiece of the artwork in and of itself like how can you capture like so concisely four archetypes that exist separately and together like just lyrically that's amazing to be able to do that you look instead i said you took it there what's up with you hey what's up with you what you gonna do? Gonna do. You want me, don't you? you want me, don't you? I know you do. I know you. Yeah, I want you too. I want you too. You wanna do me? I know it's me. Yeah, I know it's me. I hope it's me. See when you notice me. Notice me. I noticed you. I noticed you. You say what up? Say what up? What up with you? What up with you? The things you do and who you do it to. Watch what you do. I'm seeing you. I know it's good for you. Good for you. It's just for you. It's just for you. We have like a lot of pressure as women to like not embrace our loving nature like it's something we're supposed to suppress because we have to like advance in society like and I don't think I think we are very loving creatures and oh I just burped oh my god I was, I was drinking this <laughs>